Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Saturday. It is the third day of June, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. It's very warm, late spring day. Looks like it's going to cool off in the week ahead, so uh, uh, if you're looking to do some outside work, might be the week to do it. Have gotten some rain here and there. We had a nice downpour yesterday and left puddles. But it's still kind of spotty, so we're still praying tonight for favorable weather for our local farmers. It's been quite dry. Um, also, tomorrow we celebrate the Holy Trinity. So church at 9 tomorrow, and then we begin the long season of Pentecost. Although I believe the following Sunday we will celebrate St. Barnabas. It falls that day. The commemoration of Barnabas falls on a Sunday. And uh, since it's the season of Pentecost, we'll, we'll observe it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight we turn to the 97th Psalm. It is an uninscribed psalm, and I'm going to start by reading what Luther says about it. I'll sing it for you in just a moment. But uh, if you have participated or listened to my, uh, when I do my Lenten time of prayer, sometimes I'll do that during Advent as well on Saturday mornings, I read and sing mostly from the Psalms during that hour. And this is a wonderful little book available from Concordia Publishing House, Reading the Psalms with Luther. And it has them all marked for singing, like we're going to sing tonight. I, I didn't mention already, this is uninscribed psalms. We don't know who wrote it. But he has a little, uh, there's a little, just a little paragraph, of Luther's reflections on this particular psalm, and all the psalms, all 150 psalms in the book. So I commend this to you. It might be something, uh, uh, I find it a real blessing to my prayer life. Remember, the psalms are just really the core of our of our prayer life. They are the prayer book uh, of the Bible. So let me, before I sing the psalm to you, and there's 12 verses in the psalm, 97th psalm again, let me read Luther's thoughts on this. The 97th psalm is a prophecy of the kingdom of Christ, just as the preceding psalm was. And the significance is always this, that Christ rules and maintains this kingdom through the gospel through which he sends out thunder and lightning and burns his enemies and melts mountains. That is, he brings low all holiness, all wisdom, power, and whatever is great, so that they might be holy, wise, great, and powerful through him alone. Along with these enemies and mountains, the Israelite kingdom and worship perish also, as well as all that is not Christ, for he alone shall endure and all others pass away. As the stone in Daniel cut from the mountains fills the whole world and scatters everything else and makes them do nothing, that's from Daniel 2.34, he will be the mountain filling the whole world. That's Luther's wonderful thoughts on that. I'm going to set that aside as now I sing for you the 97th Psalm. Actually, I could sing it right from this book because, as I mentioned, it's Mark. And I'm going to use... One of my favorite chantones, Chantone I. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, 
All who make their boast in worthless idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And again, that is the 97th Psalm. The 97th Psalm is an uninscribed psalm. And the psalm begins with the Lord reigns. And indeed he does. Uh, we heard how over the, we'll hear this again tomorrow, uh, but uh, all authority, we'll hear, we'll hear for the gospel reading that all authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. We talk about the ascension and then Pentecost. We hear about the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, being seated on his throne. And he reigns, and he reigns forever. Uh, his Father has placed him on the throne. And so all of the earth rejoices in that. It's the beginning of the undoing of, even though we don't see it yet fully, it is the undoing of the fall. I mean, he did undo the fall in his death and resurrection, and now we're waiting for the consummation. We're in the end times, the time of tribulation. We're waiting for the, the finishing of it all. The resurrection is coming again with glory according to his time and according to his will. We hear about clouds and thick darknesses all around him. There is that, revel that picture of revelation about this, this cloud and lightning. And of course, we have this imagery of God coming to us in cloud and lightning. Of course, uh, the cloud figures prominently in the gospel as well. Uh, Jesus' transfiguration, of course, his ascension, and then even there's a connection with the tongues of fire on Pentecost. But the creation as well proclaims the glory of God. And I mentioned this a few nights ago, and it's important to keep this in mind as we read the Psalms, that yes, you can look up on a beautiful sunset, a beautiful starlit night, a beautiful sunrise, and know that there's a God. The beauty of his creation is all around us. Just marveling at birds. Like at this time of year, the birds are all around me. I'm out working outside during the day. And there's a little wren house over my head. And they're just the most, they're not much bigger there than a hummingbird. And I have hummingbirds around too. Just the most, most amazing animals. And they let you, you know, if you're out there working and they get used to you being around, they get fairly close. Hummingbirds are almost fearless. I mean, they buzz me like bees. It's kind of freaky at times. But just the beauty of God's creation. Yet, as it proclaims God's glory, it doesn't tell us specifically about God. It just tells us, it communicates that there is a God. Now we have the Word, particularly the Word made flesh, God coming among us and telling us and living with us. Of course, that's Christ our Lord. And telling us about how it is, who we are as we stand before him, and how it is that we're saved and are restored to that perfect fellowship with God. So fire goes before him and burns up adversaries all around his lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Now that little paragraph I read from you from Luther, he picks up on that. When God issues judgments, and, and judgment does come, and I think about our nation, and you think, whole month that we got to deal with pride. I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. And, you know, I just, it's just in your face. I know, you know, it, there's a call for all of us to repent, not to celebrate our sin, but to repent of our sin. All of us. All of us. We all have plenty. All of us. So anyway, I do worry about our nation and, you know, will we come under judgment? Just one thing after another, leaders that have no moral courage, no moral compass, people who follow them without that same moral courage or moral compass, um, parents that are 
too worried about being their kids' best friends than than actually being a parent or just kids growing up parentless. They see around us increasingly because things have become so oh, just so unbridled that increasingly public venues are not allowing children under a certain age to come without an adult. Amusement parks around us, uh, Mercado and Fifth Street, which is a wonderful time, and go down there, just you know, good things to eat and buy, just celebrate life with our Hispanic neighbors. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and what a blessing they are to our community. But, you know, this, so many kids are being raised without parents. Anyway, I do wonder, you know, cause, and why? Because of what we've done to marriage and what we've done to our bodies. I do wonder, you know, are we coming under judgment? Now, when we think about that, first of all, we say, all of us think, oh, that's what we deserve. I think I've mentioned this a number of times before, but it bears repeating that. When you read the great church fathers, and I'm thinking of St. Patrick at this moment, Augustine, and Patrick in particular, who was taken by the Irish, this is before they became a Christian nation, and and he and his sister were captured and taken into slavery, and, and it's miserable for years for Patrick. And you can read his autobiography, it's fascinating. And he, years later, when he writes his autobiography, he says, you know, this is what I deserve. He doesn't say, oh, God hated, you know, he's like, this is, this is what I deserve. Now, the thing about it, when we, when we come under judgment like that, and, you know, we acknowledge this is what I deserve, and this is what Luther picks up on. Yeah, what, what is, this is where the great mercy of God comes. The goal is not just get rid of you because you're troublemakers, you won't listen to me. It's to call us to repentance that we're emptied of our own ideas of self-righteousness and self-holiness and become truly holy and truly righteous before God because we realize we're nothing and then we cling to Jesus and his righteousness. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So yes, we see the psalm continues, and that's a wonderful thought of Luther's, but think about that when judgment comes. God uses that to wake us up, you know, to acknowledge him. And that happens, I think, in all our lives in sometimes grand ways or, or uh, sort of slap you upside the head ways. And other times are just the normal, from our eyes, the normal process of life, how we, as we age, and our bodies break down, all the things that we relied on, God takes away until we have nothing left but to look at him. And sometimes that happens as we care for others and those around us. All the things we planned, all the things we want to do, like children, come along. And sometimes there are special needs uh, that are always needy because they're small and we have to raise them. And our life, you know, instead of all these things you know, that selfishly we want to do, all of a sudden get put aside for the caring of these lives or the elderly. And then we gladly do it. Yeah, we grumble, we sin, stuff like that. So anyway, God uses these things to break us down. And then to build us back up in the uh, 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 build us back up in the gospel. All worshipers are worship worshipers of images are put to shame. You become what you worship. This psalm doesn't take that up specifically, but it comes up actually just down the road from this psalm. You become what you worship. You become deaf like them. So God again slaps us upside the head and wakes us up. So, but then in Christ, our ears are opened you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we talked about that on Pentecost last Sunday, and the Holy Spirit can get where I can't. He gets into your ears. I can't get past anybody's ears. Uh, but he takes what I say, which is the word of Christ, you know, that I expound by my call as a pastor, and he gets into your ears. Plus the reading of the word, the singing of the word, everything that happens in the divine service. Light is sown for the righteous as the psalm comes to an end, and joy for the upright in heart. That's a wonderful juxtaposition, juxtaposition of light, dark. And John, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, really really, really emphasizes that theme, that Christ is the light that comes into the world and the darkness can't overcome it. So we have the light of Christ that shines upon us. So light is sown for righteous, for the righteous, and joy for the upright heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. We're righteous, why? Because we have, we've been washed with the blood of Christ and give thanks to his holy name. Beautiful how this psalm, as it points us to creation, just narrows it down and says, Christ. Christ. Let's confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that we would remain faithful by the power of your word and your Holy Spirit until the very end. And we pray for the renewal of those who are withering in faith or for those, or, and for those who have fallen away. Bless us with receptive hearts and minds as we gather again tomorrow to receive your word on the Lord's day. And bless my brothers in office and myself and the people as we prepare to administer and to receive Christ's holy gifts. We ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. Be with Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, with Dale and Cecil, with Jeremy, Marvelous, Liberty, Ron, Anita, Dave, Heather, Bert, Joe, Phil, Dylan, Katie, D, John, Josiah, Jeff, Christy, Bob, Jason, Camden, Jim, Brad, Paul, Tom, Ashley, Scott, Eric, Clint, Beth, Deb, Amy, Steve, Don, and all who are crying out to you. Place your hand upon them, healing them according to your good and gracious will, keeping them ever mindful of your love for them, manifest in Christ our Lord. We ask you to send favorable weather, that the farmers around us may be blessed with abundant fruit, that they may be your instruments in feeding us, your people, and our neighbors and our community and even our world. May their needs may be met, May they be able to provide for their families as they provide for us. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy to defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Between your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn 590. Baptized into your name, most holy. Baptized into your name, most holy, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I claim a place, though weak and lowly, among your saints, your chosen host, buried with Christ and dead to sin. Your spirit now shall live within. All right, that stands a one of four of hymn 590, baptized into your name most holy. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest this evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.